Hey, welcome back everybody, and in today's video we will be going over combat employment of the legendary Spitfire. So stay tuned. Alright everybody, welcome back, and for today we will be focusing on the Spitfire and the weapons it can employ. Uh, it's pretty simple, especially as compared to say the P-47 or the Mustang. The Spitfire only has its machine guns, its cannons, and the ability to carry bombs. They did not carry any rockets. I'm going to break this down. I'm going to start with bombs, uh, air-to-ground employment, and then move over to air-to-air. -air. And as usual for these kind of videos, I'll have the timeline marked off in the appropriate chapters uh, for the different, uh, for the different uh, weapons in combat. I'll start with the bombs. Uh, those will be pretty easy. So, our journey with the bomb starts either here in the rearm menu or alternatively in the mission editor. And here you can select your various bombs and the stations that they can go on. Uh, you can carry a 500 pounder on the belly station or 250 pounders on either wing. Now if you take the wing bombs you will get two bombs. You can't carry one and not the other. So it has to be symmetrical if you're taking the wing bombs. Uh, just note that this configuration with the three bombs it is very heavy. I do not recommend taking this unless you are operating from an airfield that has a pretty long runway in order to get enough airspeed on your takeoff roll in order to get this loadout aloft. Also in here, uh, I want to call your attention to these little orange triangles here and the station windows. If we click on these, this will take us to our fusing. And we have a pair of fuses that we can choose from the nose or the tail pistols. Uh, either one works. I haven't really noticed a discernible difference between these two. Uh, however, the two more important ones is you have the function delay, which you can set in seconds. So either instant, one second, two and a half, 12, 15 seconds. That's the delay. So as soon as the bomb hits whatever it's going to hit on its way down, uh, this, once the, once it impacts, it'll set off the, de um, the fuse will, will get started and will detonate either instantaneously or with whatever one of these delays. So you have to set this up beforehand either here in the rearm menu or in the mission editor. Uh, if you're doing low level I do recommend having one of the longer delays. It gives you plenty of time to clear the area before the bombs detonate. It doesn't do much good if you shoot yourself down in your own explosion. And believe me it has happened to me Plenty of times, and then last night, in fact, on our uh, on our squadron server. Uh, the other thing here, these arming veins, and the arming veins. I'll show you this here in a second. But the number of revolutions that it takes for the fuse to arm. So in the cockpit, you don't necessarily arm the bombs. All right. So if we look on the nose of the bomb, you notice this little propeller-looking doodad. That is the the veins that it was just mentioning in the rearm menu. So when the bomb is attached to your airplane, these veins are stationary, they're restrained. But as soon as you drop the weapon, those veins are free to rotate and spin as they windmill through the air. The, uh, the number of revolutions that you set that little windmill has to spin that number of times in order for the fuse to be armed. Once it is armed, that is when the bomb will actually detonate once the fuse gets set off at impact. But this is the little uh, veins that that was talking about in the rear menu. Uh, if you're doing low level or very low altitude, I would recommend setting that to a low number because that little windmill has to spin that requisite number of times before the fuse is armed. And if you drop low and that hasn't spun around enough times, the bomb is essessentially just a 250 pound rock at that point. It's not going to detonate. It's just going to be a 
big heavy object that just falls on something. So it's just something to be aware of uh, and to set accordingly for your bombs. All right, enough talking out of me. Let's go see on how to employ these. All right, here we are back in the cockpit. And like I mentioned a minute ago, the controls for the bombs in the Spitfire are very simple. There are no, you don't have to arm them. There's no enable switch or anything that are specific to the bombs. The only thing that you have to enable is the gun safety lever, which is this little guy on the control column. And as long as that pin is sticking out as it is now, your weapons are armed. And the only thing you have to do at this point is engage the drop bombs uh, button if you have that map to your joystick otherwise it's a uh, right alt space I believe if you use a keyboard but yeah it's the drop bombs so whenever you drop the bombs whatever you have loaded on the aircraft all of them go and in my case here I have just the 250 pound wing bombs and we're gonna go ahead and do a diving attack now as I mentioned in the p51 guide Bombing in Warbirds is incredibly difficult. Uh, in order to achieve consistent results, especially if you're dive bombing, you're, you have to start at about the same altitude, at the same airspeed, dive at the same angle, maintain your airspeed on the way down, whatever your, whatever your target airspeed is, and then also release them at the same height every time it's a lot to deal with especially keeping your side slip uh, in check you want to make sure that you are centered up on the way down otherwise your bomb is going to fly off to either side depending on how it was slipping through the air also when you release you want to pull up at release that way you create separation between you and your weapons you can if you dive further, there is a strong chance that you could actually run into your own bombs on the way down and either damage yourself or set off your own bombs and, and, and have a mid-air detonation. Not fun. All right, I'll come off of active pause and we'll dive down on some targets underneath me. So one thing I like to do when I'm doing a dive is I'll come in off target a little bit just so I can see them underneath my wing there and once they get right in that pocket that's created by my fuselage and the cannon barrel I'll throttle back and dive down There's a few trucks on the runway and you don't want to drop too low like I said you don't want to be caught in your own blast right underneath the nose release pitch up and get away from it Yeah, I caught the truck and the explosion, but at no direct hits. Like I said, this is this takes a bit of practice to get good with the bombs, but they both came off. I hit something. Pretty good results, especially because that's all you can do. Is it's all manual bombing in the Warbirds. All right, so let's move on to air-to-ground guns. So again. All we need is our weapon safety lever uh, disengaged so it's uh, the little pin is set to out. We can roll in on a target and just let them have it with either our 303s or the cannons or even both. Strafing in the Spitfire I find pretty fun. The cannons have some pretty good punch. The 303s uh, I find a little bit lacking but the 30 caliber machine gun rounds, uh, the not 50 cals or, th or the German 13 millimeters, but it can be effective depending on what you're shooting at, like say lightly armored trucks. Come off target. So I just popped a truck right there with just the 303s only. Now I made a mistake there as well. I came in way too low and pressed the attack up until the end. And this is against an unarmored truck. If you're going against anything that is capable of shooting back at you, well, you may be in for a bad day. All right, let's do another attack. So you guys heard it took a, it took a few machine gun rounds just to take out a, an unarmored truck. Let's see what the cannons will do. 
It's a truck that I hit earlier. Open the way. Hey, so there are just a two short bursts, and I took out, popped him pretty quick. There he is. Right there on fire. And then you can always engage with both. Just like you can with any other target. Uh, in my case, I have the cannons and the guns bound to two separate triggers. Uh, my 303s are on the main trigger, and my cannons are on a weapon release button. I came in way too short. I couldn't line up on target enough. Roll in. Give him a good burst and get out of there. Scratch another truck. Nice. Well, that is air to ground employment in the Spitfire. Not exactly the best role for the Spitfire in my mind, but this thing was a much better dogfighter than it was for ground attack. So, with that, let's move on to air to air. All right, now let's look into doing air to air with the Spitfire, something that this aircraft excels at. All right, now as far as armament goes, you have the two 20 millimeter cannons and four 303 caliber machine guns. Now, as far as placement goes, if you look here on the left wing, you can see the, obviously the cannon barrel sticking out of the sticking out of the wing towards uh, closer towards the fuselage. Uh, these two red patches uh, on the outboard section of the wing, those cover the gun barrel ports for the British 303 caliber machine guns. Now, uh, 303 is essentially a 30 caliber round, a lot smaller than a 50 caliber, and unfortunately, even though it's a smaller round than the 50 calibers, you don't get to carry any more of them just because they're smaller, something I wish you could. Uh, you get one box for each gun, and a box of ammunition holds 250 rounds per machine gun. And the 303s cycle their bolts a bit faster than a 50 caliber, so they tend to chew through that ammunition pretty quickly. Something you want to be mindful of. As far as the cannons go, you get 120 rounds per cannon. So, this thing doesn't have deep magazines, per se. So, you want to have some controlled burst as you engage air targets. Now, the gun sight is a fixed reticle gun sight. Uh, you got a couple of controls for it. I'll just move my head for you guys. So right here behind the gun sight on the instrument panel you have this power switch. This will turn on and off the reflector sight. And this knob to its immediate right, this will dial down and dim the reticle accordingly if you're doing night missions, dawn patrol, uh, midday, whatever. Uh, that's that's your dimming adjustment for the gun sight. Past that, all of your other controls are right here on the base of the gun sight. So the convergence for the for all the guns are preset at 900 feet or 300 yards. So on the this upper ring here, which is adjustable, you just grab it with the mouse left mouse click, and you can roll this ring back and forth. So knowing that it's set at 100 yards, line it up with the three, and that helps set our sight for 300 yards. This bottom one that's measured in base feet, we use this to set our target's wingspan. Uh, something like a BF-109 or an FW-190 is approximately 30 feet, 35 feet uh, wingspan, so move it just a little bit past the 40. And what this is adjusting, is if you look right there in between on the horizontal bar of the gun sight, you can see it, it, it expands out as I slide it left and narrows back in as I slide it right. So what this is doing is this is this allows you to 
bracket your target, assuming it's flying straight and level in front of you, you put the wing tips on either side of the reticle, and if you have it set correctly for your target aircraft, if the wings are filling this gap, you are at the proper range and your guns will converge on that target. It's really handy, especially when you're attacking bombers. Something like a Ju-88, it'll have somewhere around a 65 foot wingspan. So if, if you fill its wings right there, you're at the right range, at the right convergence, so uh, and you have a very high likelihood of scoring hits with your guns. Alright, so that's gun sight controls. Let's go shoot something down. Alright, so here we are air to air, and I'm I'm approaching a Ju-88 bomber, and I'm also doing so in a way that suits this demonstration, but is I'm doing it, I'm doing something that you should never do. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with bombers is they are typically going to go in a straight line to get to their target area, and they are far less maneuverable than you are. Uh, the way I'm approaching them right now, I'm making an easy target of myself for his gunners to engage. So you don't want to do that and get yourself knocked out of the fight early. But I'm doing this so I can demonstrate how the gun sight looks when you're lined up on, good on a target. So a better way to approach the bombers, and I, and I showed this in the P-51 video, is you, you want to dance around and make, a, make yourself a very hard target for them to shoot at. And I'm going to pause there. Now... I got a little too close, but you get to see the idea. Uh, let me zoom in for you guys. You notice that my reticle has overlapped his wingtip, so I'm closer than what I have it set at. So his wingspan 65 feet. I'm closer, so I, I can open fire right now and get some good hits, but if his wingtips were here and here, then he is at exactly or approximately 900 feet from me, right at the convergence of my guns. All right, so let's open fire and see what we get. Also, another tactic for you guys to use is uh, don't aim for the fuselage like I'm, like right where my center dot is pointed at. That is a lot of empty space in an aircraft. Yeah, 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 you could hit his tail surfaces and tail controls. A much better target is the engines in the wings, especially the wing roots. If you can knock out a wing or light one on fire, he's not going to last much longer and the crew tends to bail out of the aircraft because uh, most bombers don't survive wing fires very easily. Alright, so let's do this. Weak turbulence. Something else to be mindful of. It's, you don't want to just give bursts. Right there, you can see I popped the oil cooler on his left engine, so he's trailing a thin black trail of fluid. That is engine oil, if you're not familiar with how the damage looks on aircraft. Speed up a little bit, close in on him. Oh, I got his left wing on fire, or I'm sorry, his right wing on fire. Notice now he's dropping off course. That left hole of, that left wing of his is just filled full of holes. Oh, there's the hatch. And the crew is bailing out, so splash one Ju-88 bomber, there's one. Alright, so that's bomber engagement. As soon as you see uh, the wing fire, or them dropping out of formation, that is effectively a kill and you can move on to the next bomber. 
Alright, let's move on to other fighters. Alright, so here we are, air to air against a single FW190. I, we are approaching the merge, so I'm going to throttle up to 2850 RPM. And 12 PSI of boost. I can sustain, this is military power, and I can sustain this for approximately one hour. So you just pass me off to the side. Tally, right there in front of me. I got the gun sight preset, 300 yards and 35 foot wingspan. And you guys are about to see one of my favorite parts about the Spitfire, and that is its turn performance. Probably saw that a few videos ago when we did the squadron scramble. That was an awful lot of fun and had a good time. So, as I mentioned before, we do not have a gyroscopic gun sight, so I can't calculate the lead effectively. I have to kind of just do it in my head. So right now, if I hold it on him and shoot, all my rounds are going to pass underneath him. I'm at the right range. As you can see, I'm bracketing his wingtips nicely. But all my rounds are going to fall short. Now, at this range, if I to pull enough lead, he's going to be out of sight underneath my nose. So I want to close in a little tighter on him. I just want to... I find it handy to do that kind of uh, move there, is just to pull a little bit, squeeze off a burst, and see if I achieve some hits. Probably not. You only want to give bursts. You don't want to just hold down those triggers for terribly long. So, now this 190 pilot has is in a precarious position. He's got a Spitfire behind him. He is not losing me off of his tail. Not easily, anyway. See, so he's trying to go for the dive. Oh, hit his wake. Gee, there. turn fight. So I find it good just to get him in close, just like this. He's filling most of my gun sight, pull some lead, give a burst. Nope, didn't make it. So whenever you think you're close enough, get him closer. You'll have much better results that way. Alright, so he's starting to slip away, so I'm going to throttle up to full power uh, or emergency. So that's 3,000 RPM and full throttle, so 18 pounds of boost. I can sustain this power level for three minutes. Be mindful of the wake turbulence. Starting to gain on them. Patience is very rewarded in, in stuff like this. chunk of his tail just now. Throw him back out a little bit. I don't want to overshoot him. So he's trailing some light gray uh, smoke there that is gasoline. Uh, the dark trail like you saw earlier on the bomber that is oil. Uh, thick white clouds, especially against liquid cooled engines, are going to be the coolant because it is hot coolant turning into steam. there. Just give some good burst. He's being nice and straight and level for me. Very cooperative target, if not a little bit low. A bit of a long burst there. Oh, nope, oh, he's out. Literal splash one. All right, throttle back. All right. Lastly, I want to cover power settings because this is a key. This is a key piece of air-to-air -air combat. So right now, my engine's at maximum continuous. I'm at 2650 on the RPM and 7 psi on the boost gauge. That's that red. Uh, that's that red gauge there on my instrument panel on the right. Now to increase power, remember we always increase RPM first and then manifold pressure. 
Uh, our next step above maximum continuous is military power. So we increase RPM to 2850. And whenever we increase power, it's always RPM first and then bring up the manifold pressure. So 12 PSI boost. And now we are at military power. I can hold this power setting for an hour before I have to throttle it back. And this is a good, this is a great setting to, uh, you can set this power level there depending on your dogfight and you can hold this there for an hour and not have to worry about the engine too terribly much. Now if we need more power we can go to war emergency power and that is 3000 RPM and then 18 PSI in a boost and that's that little triangle tick mark on the bottom of the gauge there. Now I can hold this power setting for three minutes. Now that is not a absolute limits. That doesn't mean that you have three minutes maximum and that's all you get in that flight. That means I can sustain this for three minutes before I have to back out of it, reduce power, and whenever you reduce power, it's always manifold pressure first and then RPM. So come back out of war emergency power give the engine a break for a minute or two and then I can get right back into war emergency if I need. Now you don't want to keep it here beyond three minutes because remember these engines at war emergency power are running at their absolute hardest. It is an enormous amount of internal stresses on the engine. Your cylinder pressures are high, your cylinder temperatures are high, and you really run the risk of getting into detonation if you stay in it for too long. That will hurt your engine, reduce your engine power, and lead to an outright engine failure. It doesn't happen rapidly or right away. It's just it's just a significant risk if you stay in it for too long. All right, I'm going to come back down to maximum continuous. So I'm going to bring the manifold back down to 7 PSI. And then bring my RPM back down to 2850. Quick glance at my temperatures and pressures. Everything's looking good. Nice. All right, everybody. Well, that covers combat employment with the Spitfire. It's a nice multi-role fighter. It doesn't it excels at air to air? It does decent with air to ground. Uh, just be mindful. You are liquid cooled, and this thing does not like to take damage into its cooling system, which will bring you down in a matter of minutes once your engine overheats and ultimately seizes. So it's just something to be mindful of, especially if you're doing it at the ground. All right, well that about covers it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the virtual skies.